Good morning to everyone. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Carrie nine, Albert nine, takes 12, a quick head count. Her students won't be sitting down for long. A lot of us are working on elder focused projects that we're going to be using for our graduation. This isn't your typical classroom or school. Within minutes, 25 kids are let loose into a place few would imagine a grade six class should be set free an advanced care home. 11-year-old Megan Drabble is feeling pretty lucky. Hi, Inga. Her partner for the morning is 97-year-old Inga Gropi, a retired Sunday school teacher. I love the children. <laughs> she sort of makes each and every one of us feel like we're really special. The saying old people really doesn't define them um, because they're much more than an old person. They're um, because they've lived longer, so they share a lot of wisdom. That wisdom is part of the curriculum. The program is called iGen, short for intergenerational. It all started with Carrie Albert. I remember saying to my brother, I would love to have a classroom where there were all ages of people. And he said, oh, good for you. Good luck with that. A bold idea, but with Albert's vision, the Saskatoon Public School Division placed a grade six class inside the Sherbrooke Community Center. It has more than 250 residents, mostly seniors, some with dementia, and people with varying physical and intellectual abilities. Unlike other programs, students don't just visit once or twice a week to volunteer a few hours. They spend the entire school year in the care home, the first of its kind in Canada. Well, we better let you get back to work then. As a young girl, Albert was inspired by her grandfather, who had multiple sclerosis. He and her grandmother worked hard to change perceptions and create opportunities for people with varying abilities. It shaped the way she sees the world, and she wanted to give that to her students. They see the human spirit. They see that if your body doesn't look like mine, that is okay. You are a human being and you have a right to a life that is abundant. And I, I absolutely see that happening in this program. Um, I get teary talking about it because it is, it is really the most powerful thing. Your picture's gonna go on to the graduation. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Isabella Dede is learning how to connect with Dean Tide. Looks pretty, Dean. <laughs> Eleven now? Yeah. Only eleven? Yeah, eleven. He's a biologist, but a brutal attack left him blind with an acquired brain injury. What do you enjoy about spending time with Isabella? Everything, everything. I want to try something new, and I want to make people happy. Good, good friends, good friends. Towards my voice, perfect. And while it may all sound nice and sweet, with an aging population in Canada, Deb Schick says it's actually a lifesaver. She's in charge of nursing and therapy at the care home. Loneliness is killing our seniors. This is a way to combat loneliness, is by bringing kids, bringing the generations together. Sherbrooke Community Centre subscribes to the philosophy that three plagues kill elders. Loneliness, boredom, and helplessness. Jody Grant knows it all too well. A teacher for decades, she has a PhD in literacy. Dr. Grant taught at the University of Saskatchewan, then the University of West Indies in Jamaica. She was living the life of her dreams. I really had everything going at that point. I was so at peace. Then, 10 years ago, she was mangled in a horrific vehicle accident, a fractured spinal cord and excruciating pain. I was completely depressed. All I wanted to do really was die. And when the accident first happened, I kept telling my son, give me your glasses, give me your glasses. What did you want to do? Oh, I was going to break them and use them to, to cut my jugular. You know, I just wanted to die. It was horrible. After two years in hospital, she moved into Sherbrooke Community Centre, and while the care was excellent, Grant had lost her purpose in life. 
it was completely boring. It was dead. You know what? You're here and I'm here. Yep. <laughs> and we're all here. But all Carrie all Albert all could all see all that Grant had a lot to offer the students. So she invited Grant to come teach and share her passion for reading with the children. Little more than a purr, flies flapping in a far off window pane. It gave me a reason to get up in the morning and an enthusiasm for life that I hadn't had. She never thought she'd be a teacher again, but here she is. Who gave up raiding ships to study bees. I think she is the most amazing person I've ever known, and I consider her one of the biggest mentors in my life, for sure. Hi. For Deb Schick, it's also become quite personal. She put her daughter Ava in the program this year to teach her empathy. I don't think it's an easy thing to do. Um, you know, you, you see kids today making fun, bullying, um, and that's, that's not okay. All right, we're ready to go. But opening her daughter's heart has also exposed her to pain when residents die. It can be quite traumatic for them. They may not, not have ever had anyone pass away in their lives. And so this is sort of their first experience with death. It's very hard, but it's also very real. And one of the things that we talk, when we talk about IGEN, we talk about it being the school of real life. I see everything with new eyes. Ava and her friend Liv are taking it all in. You can love a stranger just by looking them in the eye. The kids will carry that with them as they go back to a traditional school. They're different people. But I just look at them in wonder now. Some of these shy kids, I mean, who wouldn't look me in the eye, wouldn't get near me, who are coming up and giving me hugs. And five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. This program is now so popular, the school division must use a lottery system to select students for next year. And come September, a new class, new friendships, new life lessons. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Regina.